I was learning karate when I was 12. It wouldn't matter what, what the art was to me, but it was the experience and, and just, it, it's literally changed my life. How's it going, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 678. And my guest today is Mr. Andrew Marley. I'm Jeremy Lesniak, host for the show, founder here at Whistlekick, where everything we do is in support of the traditional martial arts. If you want to see everything we do, visit whistlekick.com. That's our digital hub. It's also the place you're going to find our store. Yeah, we sell some stuff because we got to cover expenses. And well, you know what? It's not just that. We make some pretty cool stuff and you should really check it out. Head on over to whistlekick.com and look around. And if you find something you like, use the code podcast15. It gets you 15% off. What's better than that? We give you a free show and we even give you discounts on the things that we make. Martial Arts Radio gets its own website and it is whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. The show comes out twice a week and the goal of the show and really of Whistlekick overall, well, it's to connect and educate and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world. If you want to support the work that we do, there are lots of ways you can do that. You could make a purchase, maybe tell a friend about us, or join the Patreon. If you think the new shows are worth 63 cents a piece, consider supporting us at $5 a month by visiting patreon.com slash whistlekick and signing up. And if you do, you're going to get access to even more exclusive content. I just made updates in there today. So check it out. And, you know, if you want the full list of all the ways you can support us, the paid, the unpaid, the quick and easy, the ones that take a little bit longer, as well as a constantly rotating mix of behind the scenes stuff, kind of like a mini Patreon that's completely free. Well, whistlekick.com slash family. Get the access to the whole thing. And uh, guess what? There's no links in the navigation. So we know if you go to whistlekick.com slash family, you probably really like what we do. So go check that out. I had the pleasure of talking to Mr. Andrew Marley today, and what a fun conversation. You know, everybody brings a different energy and a different set of experiences and understanding, relationship to martial arts, all of that. And I find all of it valuable. But on top of that, which, you know, it happens some of the time, I had a ton of fun. You can probably hear it in my voice. I had so much fun talking to Andrew. And I could tell he had fun as well. So I hope you enjoy this episode and I'll see you in the outro. Hey, Mr. Marley, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Hey, thank you so much, Jeremy, for having me. I'm, I'm just so excited. Big fan of the show and uh, just so excited to be with you today. Well, I'm excited to have you here. You know, anytime we have someone on who's listened to the show and knows what to expect, I, I, I feel like my job is easier because they're, <laughs> they're more comfortable with me. I don't have to work as hard. Really, what I'm saying is thanks for letting me be lazy. (laughs) I love it. I love it. (laughs) I'm just I'm just gonna hang out. (laughs) I'll add that you had to do a whole lot of work to be able to be lazy. So So, well, you know, that's a that's a great way to put it. That's a great way to put it. And you know, there there's there's something to be said for the outward appearance of, you know, I just kind of hang out and listen. But (laughs) if you've been you've been listening a while as you have, as as most of the audience has. I got to listen really intently to come up with the questions that I ask. Sure. You know, we don't, we don't prep this stuff ahead of time. It's all right. on the fly. And, and I, I like that. I like the result that that brings. Awesome. So what, what was it you, you told, you told me the logistical why you told me that you found the show because you were hunting around looking mm-hmm. for martial arts podcasts, but what was it in your mind that you said, I want to look up martial arts podcasts. Why was that something that you thought, I might like this? Yeah, you know, uh, I I hadn't been um, a a huge podcast listener in the past. I've listened to a handful here and there. But, you know, I kind of kind of started talking to some of my team at work and and they had just shared how, you know, man, podcasts are just so awesome. And it's just great to jump into something that you're interested in. Well, it didn't take me long then. It's like, well. I am very, very interested in martial arts. Mm -hmm. So let me see if I could find a martial arts podcast. And I'm poking around on Audible. And before you know it, I whistle kick. I I think what attracted me most of all, because there's there's several out there. Yeah. uh, And quite frankly, I haven't gone to any others yet. I'm planning to go to some that I've heard you suggest where you've had other podcasters 
uh, leaders on and, and, and talking with them. So I do plan to listen to a few others, but it was a cool name. I love <laughs> whistle kick name. And, and gosh, I, I don't remember trying to remember exactly what episode I came in on. Gosh, I'm going to say it's been maybe about six months ago. So whatever that current episode would have been a roughly six months ago yeah. is, is where I came on. And it was just so great. I, I just, I just loved it. I was, I was hooked. I mean, you, you had me at hello. I was, I was hooked. <laughs> it's one of my favorite I, movies. I couldn't let it go. <laughs> Gary Maguire is one of my favorite movies. Yes. Such a great movie. Yes. <laughs> well, what, what was it about martial arts that you're, that you're, you're, you're hooked I mean, it's, it, yeah. this doesn't sound like something that's new for you. So have you no. been, you've been pumped on martial arts for a while? Yeah. I, so um, I kind of like most kids, I think of the seventies, Bruce Lee movies were awesome. And so I always had an idea of martial arts in my mm-hmm. head and, you know, going to be the next superstar in martial arts. And I, I was fortunate when I was about 12 to have a person that went to my church who was a bodybuilder and and also a bit of a a martial arts person. And he decided he wanted to teach some classes. So a handful of my buddies got together, two or three of us. and Well, we're, we're off for our first class. And and we went a few weeks with, with him and, you know, and I've heard you talk about this on, on other podcasts that, that, you know, being a teacher, being an instructor is a a special skill set. And quite frankly, he, he just didn't really have that. Hmm. Um, and that's okay. Uh, still a great guy, just, just wasn't really good at that. So before long we fell off, you know, and just kind of went other on, on, onto other things. But so I, I kind of forgot about it for years and years and years, just back in my mind, uh, age gets after you some, uh, extra pounds gets after you after a while. <laughs> and, uh, there was, um, <clears throat> at my uh, office, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the the gym that was there just all of a sudden they started talking about having this taekwondo class and you know uh you know i kind of kind of got to thinking about it and it probably took me about oh six or eight months before i finally got rid of every excuse and then jumped in and and that was october 25th 2016 and i tell you jeremy the moment i dropped jumped into that group uh, i mean gosh I, i found I found a family, I found friends, I found the fountain of youth, I, I found everything it wrapped up in this thing called, for me, it was Taekwondo, it wouldn't matter what they were teaching, quite frankly, I, I, I was learning karate when I was 12. Yeah. Uh, so it wouldn't matter what what the art was to me, but it was the experience and, and just it, it's literally changed my life. I, I kind of feel like maybe, maybe 15 years younger, what I my body feels like, because I because really? you know, I'm getting older and, and I, I and Taekwondo or again, martial arts and wouldn't matter to me what it was, um, what style it was has just kind of changed my life and stretching all those aspects just, just made me a healthier person, better person. Oh, that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. I, I like the way you said the fountain of youth, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. over the years we've had pretty much every martial arts origin story that you might imagine. But, you know, one of the things in the notes that you sent over ahead of the show, as you know, as a, as a listener, longtime listeners know, we don't have a ton of people who start what we'll call later. And, and sure. everybody gets to define what later is. For some of us, later is 20s. For some of us, later is is older. When I had my school, I had a gentleman who was 72 start. Wow. And it was awesome. Shout out to Rod, wow. uh, just doing the math. He's probably not around anymore, but he was awesome. And he came and he did what he could. And, and, and I loved it. When, when you make that statement, fountain of youth, that's a, that's a powerful statement. Talk more specifically about, let's, let's say the before and the during, because it's not after, you're still training, mm-hmm. the before and during sure. and, and what you mean with that. Yeah, so before... Um... I, I was uh, blessed to uh, be a pretty decent athlete. I, let me walk that back. I was an okay athlete <laughs> that worked harder than most people. Yeah. And I still am an okay athlete that works harder than most people. Perseverance is, is, is a key element of, of my... One of the five uh, tenets. Uh, right? You know it. You know, know. it. And um, so, you know, I, 
I played basketball when I was a kid and I, I played hard. And I, I, I probably by the time when I was in high school, 16, 17, I, my knees were pretty well worn out. So mm-hmm. bad knees. And, and, you know, just over time, it was difficult walking c- kind of got difficult at, at some points in, in time. And that's the ultimate before. And, you know, I knew, I knew stretching was important. You know, I played college basketball as well. And, 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 you know, we, at 18, we had to stretch before we played and, and sometimes stretching after as well. So I, I understood the elements of it and the, the general importance, but I had no appreciation until martial arts. Now I'm getting to kind of the beginning of the during, mm-hmm. um, our, our in main head instructor, uh, master, uh, Kevin Manuel, he, he's always said that we, if you really stretch hard and, and really put in that effort, you will find, you know, say six months down the road that you will experience incredible gains and, and flexibility and, mm. you know, your kicks change and, and all those aspects. And that I, I'm literally the poster child of that in my fifties to be able to to kick over my head comfortably and, and with power and with precision. And, and to me, and again, you know, with the, the fellow that you mentioned, Rod, I, I mean, that's awesome in your seventies. I just can't even imagine that that's, that's wonderful. But even in my fifties, so I, I seem young compared to him. Uh, it's hard, you know, it Jeremy, it's, it's hard to, sometimes to do martial arts. Um, there are days that it's really hard, but, but that's, that's where that fountain of youth kind of comes back for me, where I start to feel, huh, you know, just, just a little bit further on that stretch, just, just a little bit more intense on, on this element or that element. And, and I continue to see these gains and it's, yeah, I've heard you talk about it on other shows as well. It's just this incremental gain that you can get out mm-hmm. of this, you know, you, you do, you do thousands of kicks and they're terrible. And then one day you get one almost right. And then (laughs) before you know it, another almost right. And they start building on each other. And so that's, that's kind of what I mean by my fountain of youth. Um, again, never was a great athlete, was a good athlete an okay athlete, but I just worked harder than most people. And, and I, I carry that into martial arts today. Where did that work ethic come from? Wow. Um, I think my mother probably was the the best example of that. So um, my my dad died when I was four, and my mother never remarried. We had about uh, twelve acres of of land that we lived on, and you know, wild land. I, mm. I'm, I'm hunter, fisherman, you know, outdoorsman, and so you know, we had to take care of land, you know. And there's there's a couple acre garden that you had to take care of, and and if you've ever lived in the country, I think you mentioned you're sort of in a country. Oh, area, I'm definitely country in the country area. Yeah. If you've ever been in the country, work work starts for sure when the sun goes up. It doesn't stop often until the sun goes mm-hmm. down. Mm-hmm. And once you've had to do that all the time, you know, you still got responsibilities, go to school, do whatever you're supposed to do. And you got these chores that don't don't change no matter if it's cold outside or it's hot outside. You know, they're different chores, but they keep going. I, you know, I watched her take care of a, a I, I wouldn't call it a farm because, you know, we didn't have livestock when my dad passed away. I think uh, my mom got rid of all the horses and, you know, other livestock type things, but we still maintain the garden my whole, uh, you know, through high school and, and uh, still took care of, uh, you know, long driveways that you had to maintain and, you know, blade them in winter and get snow off of them. And, you know, just, I, I watched her do that. And especially in, in, in those times, especially it was not thought of as much that ladies would do such hard work by themselves. Um, not trying, uh, you know, I love ladies, so I'm not, not against, against ladies sure, at all, sure, but, sure. you know, just in that time frame, that wasn't yeah. as, as, as common. And, and she just hit it out of the park. So I, I wanted to be just like her. <laughs> just wanted to be just like her. And you said that you had, you had tried karate at 12, I think I heard you say. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so I, I'm always interested when a child starts martial arts because, you know, 12, you're, you're getting to that age where you can say, you know, I want to do this and, and maybe the parent parents will relent even if they don't love it as an idea. Sure. 
but if you were if, if you admired your mother that much at least in in that way i'm i'm going to guess that she was at least somewhat supportive of you trying martial arts yeah yeah she she always really wanted um me to learn all i could she she just it it didn't matter what the type of learning there was no bad learning in her mind um you know I, of, of things that are appropriate of course um, and, and she just, just wanted to encourage me to learn all I could. And, and that was just another example of that, even though it turned out to be a bit short, short lived, um, you know, absolutely go for it. Give it a try. See if you like it, see what you can do with it was kind of her, her way of thinking. So yeah, she always supported everything. Well, cool. And, uh, potentially a, a delicate question here. Is, is she still with us? Yeah. Unfortunately, she's not. Uh, and, and no, no, don't worry about that question. That's just, just part of it. Um, she passed uh, Halloween of 1998. So okay. yeah, she's gone. She's in my heart, though. So she's I think her. about her often. And uh, I, I try to carry on what she would have me do or what, how she would approach things that that, that perseverance that yeah. I learned so early from her. So uh, she's, she's inside me just just don't get to talk to her uh, on a, on a, on a normal basis. So. It's, I, I, I was raised by a single mother, a, a very, a very strong person, very strong willed person. And I know that her words are, are always there as I suspect your mother's words are always there with you. What, what Absolutely. do you think she would say of mm-hmm. your Taekwondo journey? She would be so proud of me. So she, she loved, she loved, um, uh, striving for excellence. I almost said excellence, but that's not exactly it. Because again, I was never a great athlete. I just worked harder than most people. Um, but, but for her, that was my excellence, you know, that perseverance, that, that just don't give up. I, I could see her if she was around and, uh, you know, only had a chance to be a part of one tournament, but she'd have been so proud, you know, looking at me and she, and she still always called me her little boy, you know, at <laughs> <laughs> my thirties, I was her little boy. Yeah. She'd be like, Oh, little boy, look at you. Just, 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 just sparring with those folks that are obviously better than you. You just won't give up. I love that. So yeah, she would have been, she would have been probably one of my biggest fans. Oh, so I, I could, I could imagine her, uh, and, and she didn't miss many things. So she probably would have been right on the sideline. I'd been like, mom, this is like a, you know, interest school tournament. It's not a big deal. What are you, what are you doing here? She, she'd have been there. <laughs> she was proud of the effort. She, she, Absolutely. she instilled something in you early on that, and, and, and this is something that I, you know, we talk about this in martial arts circles, this idea of participation trophies and, yeah. and attendance awards and, and things like that. Uh, and the, the disconnect, I think, from, from what should be rewarding. We, we often talk about this in mm. martial arts circles. The, yeah. She helped you understand that the effort is what was to be rewarded, that you were 100% busting butt, that you were getting 100%. up before school, you know, out in the dark, the snow. You said you didn't have animals, yes. but a lot of kids that grew up on farms heard the animals are hungry. Yes. You can eat after they do. You know, that wasn't my upbringing, but I have plenty of friends that heard that. Well, and we, if I could ahead. just interrupt for just a second, yeah. you know, to, to kind of support you in that, the, the thing that you, you, I don't remember exactly the words you chose, but what, what my, what my heart heard was I can only put in the effort. I can't guarantee the increase. Right. I can't know the output right. when I work a garden or work a field or work, work some land and go hunt or fish. But what I can control is my effort. If I put 100% effort, I'm not one that really buys into this idea of 110 because like 100 is kind of like my top, but I'm going to give you every <laughs> bit of it. But if I put in my 100% effort every now and again, that work is rewarded because you're out there doing, doing, putting the effort and putting the work in. So I love that. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah it, it, gardens would be, as, as a gardener myself, gardens would be much easier if, Every seed germinated and right. you didn't have to worry about the neighbor's dog running through it or the deer yeah, coming and eat, eating stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you could, you could say, oh, okay, well, I need to plant this many seeds and then I'll get the number of carrots I want. No, you've got to put in effort. You've got to make it work. If you right. 
knew exactly how hard you had to train to achieve whatever, you know, competition right. success or, uh, you know, promotion be, being awarded your next rank, that, that sure. endeavor, whatever it is, mm. it'd be a lot simpler, but it's not you because yeah. there are an infinite number of things that can and will get in the way. Yes, sir. hundred percent. So there was uh, uh, quite a gap in between your initial endeavor into martial arts, right? And then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're picking it back up. You said 2017? Uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. 2016. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't have to do the math, but it's, <laughs> it's more than yeah. a year or two. There's a little while in yes. there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And <laughs> I've heard from the folks over the years that started and took a break, you know, a substantial break like that, that there are generally two things going on. One, there's a voice in the back of their head the entire time, mm. Mm. quietly encouraging them. Yeah. And the other mm -hmm. is fear. It, it comes down to fear. Uh, mm. Is how do I do this now? It's mm. been so long. Yeah. And for, yeah. for different people, those two voices are at different volumes. And I'm curious yeah. in your experience. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's great. I, I'd, I'd say I was probably uh, a mix of both. Um, I, st I still always loved the martial art movies. So big mm. Seagal fan, yeah. Chuck Norris, you know, lo lo love anything about that kind of stuff. So I, I, I always had, it seemed like every time I'd, I'd get a chance to, to watch one of those movies, pop, Hey, you, maybe you ought to be a martial artist. You know, you really always want to be a martial artist. You know, I could just hear like these voices in my head, right? Just, <laughs> just chomping at the bit. And then I think, you know, quite frankly, I think I, I hadn't heard, I hadn't thought of it and kind of said the words fear until you mentioned that, but yeah, I think that was, that was a real voice in my head, especially as, you know, just, just the lumbering around, you know, I'm about, about six, five, six, six. Uh, I am actually six, six, but I'm shrinking six, five now. So, you know, uh, but, um, uh, I, uh, I think as a, it just got to be harder to walk and just, you know, a lot of extra weight that I was carrying and just, yeah, I think there's some fear in there. You know, you you want to be a good steward of the time you have on this earth, mm. the 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 experience that you can share with your family and friends. Um, and and if you're sick or if you're you know just generally not healthy, you're not going to be able to do that very well very long. So I again, I hadn't I hadn't really thought about it in in the in the, the those four letters of fear but yeah i think i was i was experiencing some of that as well and and just one day just just snapped my way out of it mm. and just you know listen to the prior voice of you can do this you, you can do this you just you know you were never a great basketball player maybe you know you weren't the best pianist or or musician but 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 you can if you if you really just put your effort into this and so i just jumped in what was that first class like Oh, 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 wow. We talk about this often at, at, at our school that, you know, one of the instructors, do you remember your first class? Oh, my word, <laughs> Jeremy, I remember my first class I'm like sure it was yesterday. It's I'm been sure five years ago, but I really remember it. And, um, you know, it was, it was just this, you know, you just, the, the, the classic new guy, but with, intensity, I, I guess would be how I describe it because, you know, everybody's, first of all, as a, as a new person in the class, you're, you're the only one without a uniform on. Right. So I think that's a, a first kind of official, like, yeah, you're different. You're trying, Cubby. you're trying to hide and, <laughs> yeah. and literally could not stick out more and can't stick out more. Uh, right? I'm going to guess that you were taller than most people. And I was taller than everyone <laughs> in, in, my, in that particular class. Yes, yes. Now, I will say at my school in general, uh, I was the second tallest. There was a young oh, wow. fella um, who uh, I'm going to say he's probably about six, eight, six, nine <sighs> and was like 14 at the time. No so way. I, that's a tall yes, boy. That's a tall fella right there. Now, they, made, they made you uh, partner up all the time, didn't they? Absolutely. We were... It, continual partners. That's <laughs> the way that went. 
but yeah, back to the, the first day moment, like, uh, yeah, I jokingly say this, but it's, it's kind of a true thing. Like even on a beach, I'm, I'm not, I'm not one to just walk around without shoes on or whatnot and get there. And, you know, I got my, got got my low, low cut Nikes on Nikes on, and I'm ready to go. Like you know, mm. some, some gym shorts and a shirt. I'm like, yeah, we're going to do this thing. Martial arts. I'm going to be, I'm going to be awesome here. And everyone's walking around without any shoes on. I'm like, Hmm, what's this thing? What, 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 what why are we, why is this a thing? So yeah, <laughs> I go through that a quick first thing. And then the second thing I remember that again, like it was yesterday was, so I, I never was much of a, military minded person. So I think at, at least at our school, there's, there's a, a feeling a little bit of, of kind of a militaristic aspect. I suppose most schools have some element of that and, you know, yes, sir. And no, sir. And, you know, and Mr. This and, and miss that or ma'am or whatever. And, you know, I, I never, I never had a problem with it conceptually as long as it wasn't kind of required in like this hard thing. And it was kind of required. It wasn't so hard for the for the new newbie white belt out there because we didn't know anything. You know, we didn't know what what was right or how to walk or anything at that point in time. So it was interesting for me because I got on board with that quick and easier than I might imagine that I would have because, um, <clears throat> like my dad and my brother were both military men and they they loved it. You know, they were they were deep into it from from stories that I've heard, but whatever that gene was, it totally skipped me. And I was never interested. Love and support have high ad admiration for our military soldiers, but uh, never my cup of tea. Yeah. But I just got on board with this idea of, yes, sir. Like, yes, ma'am. Tell me, teach me on this journey. You've been on this journey. Sensei, so to speak, you know, from the movies. I'm like, oh, okay, I I'll, I'll do whatever. So yeah, I have such fond memories of it. Uh, and, and if I even go a little further into the first test, Please. oh, Jeremy, let me tell you, <laughs> I was scared. Oh my goodness. I was so scared. Of what? I've been practicing. I've been trying hard. Uh, how, this is the how, how, lo how long in are we talking? Uh, two months. Two okay. months. So two months, the, you, you've gotten to know these people. You've spent hours, dozens of hours yeah. with them. Yeah. What were you scared of? I, I just, I thought. I thought I would freeze up. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I know I put in the time, uh, our first form, uh, is Chung Ji. And so I, I know I put in the time on Chung Ji and the definition of Chung Ji, but I just had this thought like I'm going to freeze up and just, and I, I quickly became friends with, um, several of the folks, but, um, Master Manuel, he and I work at the same company. And so we had interacted a, a handful of times, um, o over, over time and, I just always wanted to make him proud of me. Seems silly, maybe, because you know, I'm older than him. But I just, you know, I, I wanted, I wanted, maybe, maybe not make him proud of me so much, but more so, never make him feel like he was giving the old guy a break. Mm. Maybe that's what it was. And so I just didn't want to freeze up, didn't want to blow it. Just, oh, I've never been through anything like this, trying to figure it out. Oh my gosh, I know I should have enough power to break a board, but I got a board break. Maybe, I, can I do it? I don't know. Is it going to be harder than I think? You know, all of these elements are just running through my mind. So I, I, I think I was just overthinking it was, is the bottom line. And, and just that overthought probably made me feel a little, uh, little concerned. But I got through it and it was great. It was awesome. And, and I, I tell you, I still have a little bit of butterflies every time, uh, you know, test comes along. Going back to my basketball days real quick, but I, I was, um, I always jumped center. And so just until that ball went up in the air and either I tipped it or the other person tipped it and we actually started to play, there was always some, some butterflies and mm. martial arts, especially in testing, but that first test, especially. There was a ton of butterflies. Just couldn't seem to get them get them under control until we actually started going. Mm. But great experience. I love it. I love also one one neat thing that we do in our school. Typically, and you know, it just depends who's at class and how it goes. But typically, the the instructor of of a class will pick one of the better uh, students in class to work with the white belts. Mm -hmm. um, and so. 
I've had that honor and privilege a few times to do that. And I love that when I get that on, honor and have a session where I've got the white belts because I just, I can, I can relate to them so well, even if they're little, little ones, you know, cause I'm like, I remember when I just didn't know which way to turn. And that seemed like so hard in a form, you know, and, 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 you know, after you've done it 10,000 times, it doesn't seem real hard at all, but I can, I can feel where they come from. So I, I always have a special part in my heart for, for those newbies. So I, I think it's so nice when a school allows others to work with those lower ranks. Sure. Because you're closer to remembering your first day. You remember sure. what it was like. You know what it's like to be that white belt who's feeling like they stick out and they don't know anything and they just want to connect their effort yeah. with some sort of result. I think that that's where that anxiety that we all, just about all of us, experience in competition and testing. You know, we've put in the work. We want to. We want to feel like the work we put in is going to have a result, a positive result. And sure. until it's over, you don't know. So you're, Just you're, you're nervous, but sure. to, you got it. to be able to experience with those, those new students, that first moment and talk them off the ledge Yeah, in a sense, it's like, Hey, sure. I've been there. You know, it's been mm -hmm. a long time since I had my first, first class, but it, I've had plenty of first classes since then, sure. and I still get nervous. Well, you know, I'll tell you another interesting thing. Again, I, I don't, I don't have a lot of multiple school experience, so I can only talk about what our school does. And this, <laughs> so this may be unique; it may not be unique, but I've always enjoyed this aspect of our school. Every time we start a new session, which is roughly about two months, uh, depending on how the calendar falls. Um, might be might be nine weeks sometimes or, or whatever, but um, we always start again slowly, and we always everyone in class doesn't matter if you're multiple degree black belt. Everyone starts again and really works on technique, and we'll go slow for maybe about maybe the first two weeks. Really, you know, certainly the first two classes. If everybody in the class is higher than a white belt, we might speed up a little bit. But for, for a lot of the times, we really work on technique. And, I, and I, it, I, I love it and I hate it. I love it that I get to work on things. And I hate it because it's this mirror that shows me how bad I am still mm. as a black belt. I'm like, oh, for heaven's sakes, I got to get better at this. So uh, it's, it's a bit of a love and hate for me. You know, mar martial arts is, is so bizarre in that the better you get, I, I think if you're doing it the quote unquote right way, not that I, I like using those words, but if you're progressing sure. with a truly open mind, you start to see how much is out there, how much you can learn. Yes. And so the better you get, the more you realize in a relative manner, you're terrible. And yes. yet we keep going. <laughs> yes. So true. It's, so true. It's, I, it is cruel in a sense we are we are being <laughs> terrible to ourselves but i think at the same time that it, it reinforces you know I, I went for a hike sunday and um it was very cloudy at the top you know i okay. knew at the bottom is gonna be cloudy at the top and i just kept reminding myself it's the journey not the destination it's the journey not wow. the destination i think that that applies pretty apt to to that you know we we step in we realize hey we're we're all terrible. Just yes. some of us don't work on the things that we're terrible at. And everybody doesn't always see us that we're terrible. I got plenty of things I suck at. Oh, yes, sir. People just Me don't too. know. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I I want to I want to know because I'm 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 hearing in your voice, I suspect that this transition happened. So if we, if we chart the course of your martial arts path, it's interest and trial and then back to interest and then yeah. trial. And what I'm hearing now in your words, I would call commit. Hmm. So there was a mm -hmm. point where trial in this Taekwondo leg of your journey became mm -hmm. commitment. 
Sure. Yeah. Was that yeah. something you realized as it happened or only in hindsight? Um, I, I, I guess a little bit as it happened. Um, I, like I remember I, I probably, probably the moment that, that makes me feel like I started to really realize was when I was, and again, I don't know, again, I don't have broad knowledge, so I don't know if everyone's belt system is roughly similar, but ours goes white, yellow, uh, orange, two versions of green, a high and low, two versions of blue, high and low, um, six versions of brown, then we get to a red, and then the black belts begin a temporary black, and then first on, and, and on and on. And I remember when I was, ah, gosh, I think I was high blue. I could have been low blue. I know I had a blue belt, but I just don't remember for sure if I was high or low. But we, um, so we had multiple, we still have multiple facilities, but at the time I trained in two facilities. I had a facility that was the downtown branch, which was uh, in downtown Louisville. And um, it, 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 like I say, one of, one of the, the corporate gyms there, and then there was another branch that we had at um, one of the churches that was in kind of the suburbs a bit. And um, that that facility, we, we kind of had the whole basement of, of that facility. So, you know, we lots of students and, and just, you know, depends on we had a main room that we had everyone in. And that, that was kind of the, the main spot. And then we had breakout rooms where things went along. And, mm -hmm. and I have I remember this moment. So I, I'd assisted teaching breakout groups, you know, a number of times, just again, that perseverance, I was always there. So even though I was horrible, I was getting better. I was a decent instructor or teacher, if you will. But, but my skill, I, I was definitely one that I could tell you better than I could show you to some degree. And I have this memory where there were a ton of people at, at class that particular day. And there was a, a, a chunk of white belts. And, um, uh, master Manuel came over to me and he says, Mr. Marley, um, would you like to take all of the white belts out so we can fit more people in the, the main room here and run an entire class with them? Like from start to finish stretches, kicks, you know, intro kicks, break, you know, the whole thing. And I was, yes, sir. I was sort of like, I'm, I'm hungering for, hungering for this day. Uh, I caught this whale. What am I going to do now? I caught it. <laughs> oh no. I caught it's a like whale. the dog ch chasing the car. What are you going to do when you catch it? Exactly. So I caught this whale now. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm ready, sir. Yes, sir. And so off I go in, into that room. And, and I think even just walking over there is, I don't know. 10 or 10 or 15 white belts are following me over everywhere from a seven year old to a, to a 35 year old. And, and I, I, you know, I think I know what I'm doing. I've done numerous, numerous classes by now and, and practiced and trained, but now I'm the person and I, and I don't have even a black belt in the room that I can look over and say, sir, or ma'am, am I doing that right? No, I'm in a breakout room down the hall around the corner. And I, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be. And I think that was the moment for me, Jeremy, where I just like, okay, okay. Like we, we talk about that. We, we, we kind of have a statement that we say, don't, don't get a black belt, be a black belt. Mm. And so even though I wasn't a black belt yet, wasn't even a brown belt yet, but I was like, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm serious about this. I, I'm going to be ready anytime, you know, my number's called. To, to, to kind of be ready to, to go in the game and give the best that I could for, for myself at the school, the students. And I think that that's where it was for me. You, t you talk about that experience of being on your own. And yeah, <clears throat> I remember one of the most empowering experiences for me was realizing that my instructors forgot stuff too. That they messed up stuff sure. when they taught to that, you know, we'd be go, we'd go back over a form, you know, Tuesday would come around and we'd go over the form that we learned on Thursday and everybody doesn't move a certain way. <laughs> and the instructor goes, what are you doing? It's not that way. It's this way. And we all look around at each other going, 
I don't think we all screwed this up the same way. Right. <laughs> and and then the instructor going, oh, okay. Well, that's not how you do it. I don't know what was wrong. Okay, with right, right. This is how you're supposed to do it. Oh, but we practiced it this way. Can we? Yeah. No, you we can't. This is the right. No. <laughs> and, and, and just and realizing that just as there is imperfection and growth in learning, there's imperfection and growth in teaching. 100%. Love that. Love that. It's free. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, it, it is free. And, you know, I, one of the things that I love to do, and I've seen several instructors do this over, over time, I always kind of say all of us are students, and, and some of us have the wonderful opportunity to be instructors as well <clears throat> and um, to care for those students. But I love to either take other black belts or um, senior brown belts and you know, have them lead a portion of like opening kicks, for example, or I have them teach a breakout group. And um, I recently did it, I was teaching a class and I, and I needed, needed another breakout instructor. So I, I had a, a blue belt, high blue lead some things. And it's, and it's I always say this to them, but they can't really appreciate it until they're the person ca- making the call on something. This is a lot. This looks a lot easier where you're standing mm. than where I'm standing. So when you're up here and and I blow it, uh, as I often do, give me a little grace because it's a lot harder than you think. And sure enough, they they get in front of the class or or they're 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 teaching a breakout group. Mr. Marley, Mr. Marley, how do I do this for him? Or what happens next? Or or what what kick comes next? And and when you're in line, in, in you know in class, you're looking, you wonder. Why are those black belts messing this up? Certainly they know that that's not the kick that comes next in warm up kicks, right? Or that's not how we stretch next. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, at least for me, I, I had an opportunity over the years, uh, taught about seven years at the undergraduate level. And I used to call it, um, you know, going to the whiteboard or the, or the chalkboard itis because you get there, you can't spell. <laughs> you can't write in a straight line. You're writing on an angle. Yep. And it's the same thing that seems to happen in front of a, a martial arts class. You're like, okay, what comes next, sir, ma'am? I, I can't remember. So I totally appreciate that. <laughs> One of my, I don't, I don't want to say favorite because I, I don't do it often, but if, I, if I'm teaching, if I'm working with a group of kids, and it's usually like adolescent age kids, and you'll, you'll hear snickering when you mess uh-huh. something up at the front of the room. It's like, uh-huh. All right, so uh, for this next segment, Troublesome Child <laughs> 1 is going to, to lead us. Okay, so um, let's, can you, can you take everybody through what such and such, whatever the next thing, the progression is? Sure. And sure. you watch them freeze. Oh, yeah. And everybody else doesn't necessarily get what you're doing, but for that one student, they're, <gasps> oh. Yeah. And you can see them get it. It's like, all right, would you like me to continue teaching? Yeah, okay. All right. I'll keep going. Yeah, maybe so. All right, all right. But if, you know, if, if, if we get to a point where, where you're, where you know the material better, by all means, let me know. And I will happily step out. Love to learn. So if you've yeah, got something I, to offer, I'm, please. I'm, I'm totally willing to learn. That's what awesome. do you think's been the biggest non-physical uh, element to the, the, this this oh, fountain wow. of youth transition mm. that you've had in your oh, time training? Gosh. Love that question. Thank you, Jeremy. I, mind over matter. Uh, I, I often say, and I, I don't have it totally figured out yet. I, I learn a little bit more seemingly every time I'm in Dojang, but you know, how do we get to do these things that seem almost superhuman? So you're like, well, how, how can we break that series of, of boards or this brick or whatever, whatever it is, or, or do a certain kick a certain way, especially really high kicks. And, and, and I, I think oh, there's an element that you just have to believe. I, I've, I've often seen videos of, of, you know, you might see a, a hundred pound, uh, you know, very, very small, um, uh, lady who some, something's happened to her child and, and child's under a car or something. And you see this lady lift this car and you can, you can see this is not like touched up video. You're like, this is really what happened. How is that possible? Yeah. Because at that moment, she is ultrally focused, one single focus 
on that car and saving her child. And every ounce of her mind power and her strength goes to that point. And I noticed this in martial arts numerous times, especially when I see like, you know, a seven-year-old doing some things that are just amazing. I'm like, how did you do? Because it's just, we, we learn to channel our mind. And so like, I've, I've experienced this in, in that element in martial arts. I also, you know, just getting older, sometimes it's just hard to remember things a bit uh, more than it used to be, quite frankly. Um, and I think that <clears throat> martial arts has helped me, you know, learning some Korean words and, and you know, forms um, and, and all, all those elements uh, have, have helped me exercise my mind in a different way than I do on a normal kind of work day way. And so I, I think, uh, I think this, this mind power that's generated again, I, I can't totally explain it. I'm, I'm learning. I'm a working process. I'm, I'm learning every day, trying to get more of it and, and, and kind of understand more of it. But the, the way we can generate power, uh, mental power and, and physical power channeled together is just, it's just amazing to me. So I, I, I love that aspect just, just as much as I love the physical training. I even often say, in my opinion, the physical training is wonderful, but I'm like, that, that feels like 40% to me. Again, that's not a sanction, uh, uh, percentage breakdown. That's just, that's just Andrew Marley's mind. But I, I feel like it's more 60% the mind power that you get. I, I also would tell you that I, uh, occasionally in my work life, uh, have the opportunity to be a part of a team negotiating contracts. And I think, I think martial arts has helped me there as well centering, um, controlling your emotion, um, you know, keeping this, this, this focus that, that is just unrelenting, um, no matter what the circumstances is like the world slows down when you're, when you're in a, a sparring match and you, you really start to, to focus on what you've got to get done. I feel like the, the world slows down a little bit around you. And, I, and I've been able to bring that to the office area as well. So nice. Yeah. Very nice. Have other people in the office noticed? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, a absolutely. Oh, cool. Absolutely. There's, there's the joke of, you know, yeah, Mr. Marley's a black belt. Remember that's Mr. Marley. He's a black belt because <laughs> he does things. So I'm like, I, I, I joke about it with him too, because it's like, it's not like I really did a whole lot of things, but they, I guess you just see, see this just subtle nuance of centering and control. And, and, you know, at least for me, um, now, love to hear your your thoughts on how you see this because I know you you're you're way up there <laughs> in in stripes on the belt, but um, but you know I feel like the more I grow and gain in martial arts, kind of the more pacifist or the smaller I become inside, the more uh, introspective that I become. So I don't think I do much that that changes things in the office. But yeah, people have talked about it. It's like, yeah. you, you can tell he's a martial artist. I'm like, you have no idea what that really means, but okay, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, th I think, I think what happens as we get older as martial artists, and I don't necessarily mean older in age, but you know, more mm -hmm. experienced, more skilled, we yeah. recognize that what actually constitutes a self-defense scenario gets smaller and smaller. Because you start to mm -hmm. see things differently. You can head off situations before they get there and you make better choices. You make better mm -hmm. choices that don't lead to the self-defense situations. And so it becomes this, uh, um, this trust that, you know, aside from those things, you don't have anything to prove. Yeah. When you're when you're younger, you know, in in age and ego, most of us want to prove something. We want to know that that we're good enough. And when yeah. someone tells us we're not good enough, we get defensive. Hmm. And the more time oh. you spend training, I think the more we realize, you know what? That a person's opinion is irrelevant. So don't care. <laughs> so I don't care. And so if I don't care and it's not a self-defense situation, I don't need to worry about it. And yeah. what does that leave us with? But time to work on ourselves, work on our technique, work on the what seems to be an ever-increasing realization that the non-physical aspects of training 
are where the remaining benefit lies. Whether or not it's the greater benefit, I think that may be subjective. Mm-hmm. Sure. But how many more forms do I need to learn to get the benefit mm-hmm. of the forms? I've learned a bunch. But there's yeah. all kinds of stuff I can work on making myself a better person. Sure. You know, I, I love that because I, I know I've picked this up from from some of the other podcasts that you've led, but it's, I really feel like becoming a martial artist has helped me become a better person. And and I that's what I kind of hear in, in some of the elements that you mm-hmm. shared there. It's just this 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 journey that we're on and, and trying to, to grow oneself. Uh, bar none, it's, 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 it's just fantastic. But, you know, and I think you mentioned earlier something about the, the when you were talking about the, the journey on your hike, it, it is so much more about the journey than, than the next belt or whatever. It's just the journey. How did you, how'd you get there? What, what'd you learn and grow through as you got there? And so I love that. That's awesome. If it's, if it's about the journey, then you can keep going. If it's about the destination, yeah. what do you do when you get there? Wow. Love that. You know, and, and th- this is something I think about a lot because just this, this cross industry problem of people earning black belts and quitting. Mm, because crazy. as an industry, we make that to, <clears throat> out to be the destination. And yeah. if we focused more on the journey in our marketing, mm. I think there's a, there's a little bit less of a dropout rate. How do we how do we make sure that 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 message gets out? That's that's the that's the best message of all. Because I, I tell know. you, because I, I I for me martial arts, it I plan to do it the rest of my life. I, I absolutely plan to do it the rest of my life. I I I'm I'm definitely one that likes trinkets and and likes uh, marks on the the wall that says we're growing. So I I I, I think about my next belt and I and I'm working toward that. But it's the everyday experience is what drives me, not the belt. I, I like it. I want it. But it's the everyday journey. So we've got to get better as an industry on that. Yeah, and, and I think we will. I think we're in a, in a time of transition. And don't get me wrong. I, I like you called them trinkets. I, I like that validation of I put mm-hmm. in the time. Here's what comes out of it. And it's. It's motivating, you know. I, I sure. as we're recording this, uh, my next my next testing is in a month, and you better believe oh. I'm working differently for that. Sure. I, I think I think it's unsustainable to expect that someone's going to be all in on something all the time, at least yeah. in, unless they only have a singular drive, a singular purpose. You know, and, and you spoke yeah. earlier to the power of being present and all in on a singular purpose. You give the example of the, the mom lifting the car, right? That's yeah. when, when you have one goal and nothing else matters and you're willing to devote 100% of your, your, your being to that goal, yeah. amazing things can happen. And I think most of yeah. us have experienced maybe not something that dramatic, but something along the lines that helps us connect. Yeah, I, I can I can see what happens. Here's a powerful example from my own life. But most of us are multifaceted. Martial yeah. arts may be something we love, maybe even the thing we love the most, but we still have other things that we enjoy. Yeah, makes sense. Love it. Let's talk about that <laughs> that future. Let's talk about you training for the rest mm-hmm. of your life. And, and let's put it this yeah. way. Let's, let's say you and I circle back in, let's say 10 years. All right. Sounds and, good. and, you know, we, we, <laughs> you know, we're sitting down for a cup of cup of coffee. Do you drink coffee? I'm, gonna... I'm not a coffee drinker, but tea? I'll have some ice cold water. Or... Okay. Yeah, I like tea. Okay. And lemonade. Right. Yeah. Lemonade. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're getting together over the summer and it's hot. We're having some lemonade and, yeah. you know, we, we catch up a, a little bit and I say, you know, what's, we, we talked 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. What's changed for you? What, what's martial arts and training look like for you now? What would you hope mm-hmm. that you would be saying? Oh, gosh, I love that. There's, there's so many elements to it. Um, let me try to prioritize them. I, 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 hope, I hope the first thing that I say to you uh, in that moment is I reminisce on some of the great experiences 
training with other students. Um, what, 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 what did that, what did I learn in the last 10 years of that journey that I can relate to training and instructing other students and, and more so even helping? Who did I help? Who did I, who did I help? What, what's the legacy of, of how awesome are the students that, that say, Oh, Mr. Marley was my instructor for this belt. And, and, and what, what do they do? And not so much about their martial arts ability. It's, it's really about the people that they are. I, I hope that everyone that I've, that I've had a chance to touch along that way just are really, really great people, really centered, awesome people. That, that's by far number one. Hmm. Um, number two, I hope to be able to tell you about greatness of, of how our school has grown and, and all the neat, awesome things that we're doing now. Uh, this school is, I, I love it. I, uh, I'm often uh, joked as to be our, our chief evangelist officer because I, I just, I just love it. I just tell people about it all the time. And, um, you know, how many people has the school helped in the community? Um, we do food drives. We, 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 our, our teenagers are, are often, um, uh, involved in, in helping the community in, in a lot of different wa- ways. And I hope to be able to tell you great stories of this event and that event and, and all the wonderful things that we did as a, a part of the community. Mm. And then maybe, maybe thirdly, 10 years, I, I hope to be able to tell you that, um, I'm, I'm, I've moved along uh, my testing and I, I'm able to uh, ascertain uh, some, some interesting elements as I've, as I've grown in my journey. Maybe I'm, a, oh, I don't know, maybe I'm about a uh, fifth Don by then, maybe something along those lines, fourth Don, and, and just, just, uh, just tell you great stories of, of the things that I've learned as I've gotten deeper into the art, the, 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 the levels of focus that I've increased to, mm. um, maybe, maybe, uh, some, some little nuance, you know, at first form Chung G that I've been doing now for, for 20, 15 years that now I actually think I can tell you that I, I think Jeremy, I'm not sure, but I think I might've done it once 100% correct by now. <laughs> and I'll be so excited to tell you about it and take you through it. You know, I was, I was doing this punch, this middle punch. It was awesome. And I landed and I snapped it just right. And, you know, block here. And it was just wonderful. And I finally, Jeremy, finally, I got my footwork right. My front stances were good front stances. And my back stances were great back stances. I'm looking forward to the second time that I can maybe do it right. So hopefully in, in 10 more years, Maybe I can get it right a second time. So I think that that may be kind of how I'd go about if I tried to prioritize lots of elements, you know, hope, hopefully it, it keeps to be a wonderful thing from a fitness standpoint and, and all of those aspects as well. The, the things we talked about with, uh, you know, negotiating contracts or all those things. But, but if I think about just kind of those top three that stand out in my mind, I think those would be the ones I'd mm. share. I, I'm laughing because of your example of Chungji and what came to mind <laughs> was maybe maybe if I spent another 10 years practicing it, those final two punches with the step back, I would actually yes. feel like I was generating some power. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> they never Just feel one right. Time. They never feel right. <laughs> Just one time. Just one time. Well, that's awesome. Good stuff. Well, uh, Thanks for coming on. Thanks oh, for sharing. Thank you so Thanks much for, for sharing having all this. Yeah. Uh, if if people if people want to reach out, you know, is that is that yeah. something you're you're willing absolutely, willing to do? Okay. Absolutely, Personally, with me, uh, uh, I'm Andrew J. Like Jim uh, Marley at gmail dot com. Love to talk martial arts, so send emails my way, and I will respond to you as soon as I can. Love that. Um, but more so, check out missionmartialarts.net um, in Louisville, Kentucky, and just just drink it in and, and see the kinds of things that we're doing. Uh, I just encourage um, other uh, school owners out there. It, it, you know, Jeremy's talked about so many aspects of this with his marketing experience. We, we got to be on one team here. Hmm. So 
there's nothing shameful about stealing something from another school. Get on other sites and learn what they're doing and, and model it. If it seems good to you, go ahead and model that. And so I would always encourage you to go to missionmartialarts.net and, and see what we're doing. Uh, I think the school's also got Facebook account and, uh, you know, different social media. So you can follow things there. <clears throat> we, we stream all our tests, which I think is pretty neat. Oh, that's really so, cool. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's kind of a neat thing. So, you know, what, what, what we love about it as students, you know, all of our family and friends can't always come, especially during COVID, you know, with the heights of that couldn't always come, but we could always watch online and we could watch later. And I love watching late, uh, let the whole love and hate thing again, Jeremy. I love watching my tests later. Then I go, gosh, oh, Mr. Marley, you're so bad, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's, that's probably the best ways. Andrew J. Marley at gmail.com for me personally, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm just a, a, a pebble in the school that we, we have uh, that I love so much. So check that out. That's where the good stuff's happening. If, if we're being honest, you know, we're all, we're all pebbles and, and I've, yes, you know, if, uh, people who email in to, to talk to me, you know, I'll say this sometimes in my response, but it applies just as equally as an instructor. What's an instructor without students? You know, it's a crazy person just yeah. talking to an empty room. <laughs> and I had one yeah. of those in college. I know what that looks like. <laughs> so, you know, we're all, we're all pebbles. And, and, yeah. and I appreciate that visual. And you, you've listened long enough. You, you know how, how this next part goes. What are your yeah. final words to the folks listening? Oh, gosh, thank you so much. I got a, a few things that I'd love to share. Um, there's so many reasons that I, I really enjoy the whistle kick radio podcast and, and just want to share one that I think is awesome and that we can all grow and learn from. I think it's great that whistle kick is interesting, interested in sharing thoughts with the traditional mark of thoughts of the traditional martial art and traditional martial artists from every discipline. Yeah, don't, don't, don't think your discipline's better or worse than another. They're all interesting. They're all unique. They're all akin to each other. So grow and learn from all of those that would be the first thing I'd love to share. And, you know, um, I personally learned a lot just listening to the podcast with artists that, that train in other styles than I do. So I, I just think that's just very, 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 very important to, to keep us from a, as a community. The next thing I'd love to share is just don't give up when you start to look at a school that you might like or an art that you might like or an instructor that you might like. We're all different. Some will work for you. Others won't. And just keep trying till you find that one that's that's perfect for you. And and if you're lucky like me and you find that perfect one right out of the gate, that's great. Um, just stick with it. Remember that you're never too old to start training in martial arts. I kind of think about it as the old adage goes, you know, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time, the very next best time to plant that tree is today. So, so get out there and give martial arts a try. And just thanks so much to all of my martial arts sisters and brothers who willingly give of themselves and their bodies to teach and train with me and help me get better. I, I know I'm a work in process. So I, I appreciate your patience. And, and the last thing that I would say, Jeremy, is just remember to thank your biological family because you could never reach your potential in martial arts without their support. Thank you so much. We loved being with you today. In the intro, I talked about how much fun this episode was. And upon reflection, you know, after I hit the stop button, thinking about what I wanted to say for the outro, it was fun, but there was so much more to it than that. And, you know, one of the things I found interesting was Andrew was very kind of aware, very present of where he is in his martial arts journey. And it's something that I don't think all of us take the time to step back and contemplate. So that's my encouragement to all of you. Where are you now in your journey? And reflect on how far you've come, but also where you want to go. I think there's a lot of power in understanding where you are on your journey. And I say your journey intentionally because it is your journey and nobody else's martial arts journey is going to look the same. 
Andrew, thanks for sparking all of those thoughts. Thanks for the great time. And I, I look forward to talking to you again. Hey, listeners, go check out whistlekickmartialartsradio.com for all the show notes. It's where you're going to find photos. Andrew sent over some awesome photos. I'm not even going to tell you about them. Check them out. Super cool. We've got a separate page for each and every episode. And if you're down to support us and all of our work, remember, you've got options. You might consider buying one of our Amazon books, maybe telling others about the show, supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. And for the full list, as well as bonus stuff, whistlekick.com slash family. Hey, are you interested in having me come to your school to teach a seminar? Yeah? Well, we're doing that. We've got a whole tour building right now. So just let me know. And don't forget the code podcast15 to save 15% on anything at whistlekick.com. And if you've got, you know, suggestions, you know, someone we should have on the show, I want to hear from you. Email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media, it's at whistlekick, wherever you might think of. And that's all for now. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. 